Hi everybody, my name is Tiffany and I'm part of the education team at the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. And I'd like to thank you for joining me for this composting edition of our environmental education series, Learn Outside, Learn at Home. In today's lesson, I'm gonna be working with fellow educators, Lee and Claire, and we're gonna be covering the how and whys of composting. Lee will lead you with a workshop on how to build your own composting bin at home. Claire is going to look at the actual process of composting, the different stages of the compost material, how to work that into your gardens and use it to grow food and plants. And she's even agreed to dig deep and get in there and show us all the different living organisms within that material. And then the last part we'll talk about are different ways or different things you can compost at home and how that connects with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation's overall mission to help save the bay. Okay, so I'm in my front yard now and I want you to work with me and let's look around and let's call out all the things you see that are alive, all the things that are living. I see dandelions, lilies, grass, see some chickweed, bushes, trees. I hear birds, people. Um, so all of those living things you just named all have cells, are made up of cells. And for those cells, in order for those cells to grow and to reproduce, they need nutrients. So nutrients are a vital part of life. Now let's talk about the things in the same scene that you see that were once living but are no longer alive. Okay, I see mulch there, some leaves, sticks, logs. So all of those things are gonna start to break down over time. And as they naturally break down, they're gonna release their store of nutrients back into the soil. The science term for that is decomposition. And decomposition is a natural process that allows the recycling of nutrients. Without decomposition, all those nutrients would stay locked in that existing organic matter. So people, started to follow the lessons that they found in the natural world around them, and they actually began to harness and control the decomposition of organic materials, and this became known as composting. And composting has been used by farmers and gardeners for many generations. Okay, so now we have a little bit of better understanding about what composting is. Let's leave my house and we'll go over to Lee's house and Lee's going to show us how her family is getting involved in doing some composting at home by building their own composting tumbler. Hey everybody, my name is Lee. I am an educator at Chesapeake Bay Foundation and I wanted to show you just some easy things that you guys can do in your own home uh, just to make your own compost bin. So it's not something that you have to spend a ton of money on. It's really easy to make if you get the right resources. So the first thing you wanna do is find your container. Luckily, I had this big rain barrel laying around. We didn't really use it too much for rain collection. We actually have a better one that we use for our garden water. Um, so this rain barrel was being kind of wasted. So we ended up thinking, huh, we could probably turn that into a compost bin. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna drill a bunch of holes it might be a little difficult to see, but you can see maybe if there's like a bunch of these little holes that we drilled on the outside of it, and that's gonna provide a lot of air coming in from all angles. So if there's compost sitting on top of it, there's air coming in from underneath as well as on top. We also have a grate on the side that I'll show you guys later. Um, the next thing that you guys wanna do is you wanna put an opening into your compost bin. So if you wanna make a smaller one, you can use a five gallon bucket or a three gallon bucket, just make sure you have a top to it and you can lay it on its side. Um, so if you are using a bucket that has a top, you can easily take that top off, put your stuff inside and put the top back on. 
this thing was actually sealed on the top so we had to cut a little door so that was really easy all we did was just cut a nice little square that was big enough for us to put any type of compost that we wanted to put in so like any food scraps or yard scraps um the, what we did though we a little bit extra as we added these little latches that's gonna make it so any critters like raccoons or foxes and stuff like that um can't get in because my neighborhood does have a couple of those we do have a big wooded area so there could be pests that could easily get into our compost we put these little locks on just for safekeeping um and we put a little door latch to it so we didn't have to like take it off each time so that's really easy you can just throw your compost in there and then close the latch lock it back up and you're all set hey guys welcome to the ground so i just wanted to show you what the bottom of our compost bin looks like and what makes it really easy to make um, a tumbler at home so as you can see we have this nice big chunk of plywood there's another one on the other side and then we have these four little wheels on each side so you can see right here these front two there's two on the other side so there's one two three four and the barrel just sits on top of it these little wheels make it super easy for me to turn the compost bin so all of that stuff gets nice and mixed in so that's just one component of my compost bin that makes it super cheap as well as super easy for me to ro rotate it all right so i'm gonna show you what the inside of my compost bin looks like um, it's really nifty just because we do have these little latches that help us keep it nice and locked so i'm going to show you what the inside looks like you can see we have a lot of grass clippings my dad cut the grass earlier today you can see some of our food scraps we have some oranges we have some like tomatoes and stuff like that that we ended up not being able to use you can see a nice brown banana peel hanging out in there too um, we also have some like lettuces some egg shells and some orange shells um, so that's just some of the stuff that you guys can put in it. I know ours does need a lot more brown material. As you can see, we have a lot of the green. We don't have enough soil in there. So my carbon to nitrogen ratio is going to be a little bit off. The next thing I wanted to show you guys were these little blades that we put in. So we put two of them um, on each side. It's just a PVC pipe that we cut in half. It was really easy to do and really easy to install. These little blades will help me mix up all of my compost, making sure that my compost doesn't turn into this nice big sausage roll. So another thing I wanted to show you about my compost bin that we added, um, we did cut out this nice big square right here and added like a metal mesh to it. So this just provides a nice good airflow into it. We do have the holes that are on the side, but this doesn't provide enough airflow. So this gives us a nice good airflow in and out it also lets in some critters like flies, things that can get in there really easily. It lets in more microorganisms for us to decompose it. So we definitely talked about all the different things that your compost bin can have. So I'm really excited to see how this soil turns out. I'm gonna let you guys go over to Claire. She's gonna show you what composting looks like kind of as the end result. This one's a little bit more in the process. So I'm gonna let you guys go to Claire and I'm gonna let you guys see what it looks like to have compost in your own garden at home. Hi everyone, Claire Cambardella here, Baltimore Harbor Environmental Education Program Manager at Chesapeake Bay Foundation. And I wanna take some time to introduce you to the composting system that I'm able to use at my house. So the system that works best for me is this um, two-chambered tumbling system and if you can see that it has two doors currently this is the side that i'm adding fresh compost to or fresh scraps to be composted and this is the side that i'm letting sit so that the compost can continue to form here what i've done is taken compost from three different stages of decomposition so that you can see some of the process over here on the left, we've got pretty much fresh scraps of vegetables. You can see a coffee filter, these eggshells. Here we were about midway through the decomposition process. You can see some of the eggshells are starting to break up, though they don't really break down that easily. You can sort of still see some coffee grounds in here, and um, because it's spent some time in the tumbler, there are even some invertebrates 
that are starting to get in there and to assist in that decomposition process. This last little pile here is the finished compost, which I actually um, had already spread in my garden. So we've got finished compost here with a little bit of soil from the garden as well. Now, aside from the fact that uh, composting is really cool because it gives you um, fertilizer to use in the garden, it's kind of like magic too. So think about it. You take your food scraps and then you get this stuff from it um, over just a couple of months that uh, you can put in your garden and it'll help your plants grow um, and help all the biology in the soil stay alive. So let's take a look in the garden and see what that actually looks like. So I haven't uh, planted anything in this part of the garden yet. I just have straw covering over the soil, which I've added the compost to. And this straw helps to keep the soil from getting dried out by the sun and to keep the moisture in. So let's see what it looks like underneath. Yes, you can still see some eggshells. They don't break down that well. But look at this, right at the surface, you can already see an earthworm. So these little buddies are in here digging their tunnels, consuming what they can out of the soil and leaving behind their, leaving behind their castings, which is really, really rich um, for us. And if you can see even kind of it looks like the soil sort of has little pellets, those are worm castings. Um, so we know that this is healthy soil and um, I'm going to say that's no doubt in part because of the compost that um, I've added to it. So this next part might not be for everybody, but I'm actually going to dig into my compost with my hand uh, and see if I can pull out anything that's living in there, anything that we can um, see with the naked eye. So it could be worms, bugs, beetles, fly larvae. We'll find out. So there it is, everybody, and I'm reaching in. One neat thing about this is that the decomposition actually creates a lot of heat, so it's kind of a chilly day, and my hand is actually quite warm. Oh, look at that. So this little buddy is actually a black soldier fly larva, um, and they are voracious eaters, so definitely good to have in the compost. Thank you, Claire, for showing us all the different stages of the compost material. And thank you for being so brave to get your hand in there because that was amazing. There are so many things living in that compost material that I didn't even know um, live in places like that. Um, just looking at that uh, decomposing food web was like a whole new thing. Um, makes me kind of excited to get out in my yard and I might roll some logs and look and see if I can find some critters under there. I might look under some uh, patio pavers or all flower pots that are out there, anywhere, leaf piles, and see if I can find some of those critters out there. And I also want to just talk about the many benefits, right, associated with using compost. If we can enrich our soil, and make our soil healthier, that is going to benefit the Chesapeake Bay. If you have hard, compacted soil, when it rains, that rain's gonna hit that hard, compacted soil, it's gonna hit that soil, it's gonna hit that land, and it's not gonna soak in, it's gonna run off. And when the rain runs off the land, it has the potential to pick up all different types of pollution and carry that pollution with it to our storm drains, our creeks, our streams, and ultimately to our bay. Same thing if your soil is sandy and it rains, it's not gonna hold that moisture or hold that, that water. So mixing that compost in really enriches your soil and it makes it much better at retaining moisture. And the more of that moisture we can retain, the more we can slow down um, and reduce that runoff. So that's going to ultimately improve the quality of our rivers, creeks, and streams, which will then, of course, help us in our mission to save the bay. 